Mr. Bison Flips. Mr. Bison Flips. Mr. Bison Flips. Mr. Flips. Hi, and welcome to this video on the novel. Um, I'm particularly focusing on the development of the English novel and the features uh, of it, but certainly this can be applied to, to any language. Uh, at the end, I will relate this to the second paper of the IB Literature course, but certainly uh, this definition applies to all English courses, uh, and it will be helpful for anyone to, to have a clear sense of what the novel is. I've consulted a few dictionaries just to make sure that my definition is in line with the standard one, and, and this seems to be almost word for word, co uh, coherently what the dictionaries seem to agree on. That uh, a novel is an extended fictional work in prose, usually in the form of a story. So we can have that as a, as a base point. I thought we'd start with a bit of a historical uh, evolution of the novel. Uh, I'm making a very simplified uh, summary of, of the English novel and how it's come to, to be. Uh, but I do want to show you some of the main influences in terms of why novelists have written over the years to kind of show you what's shaped the novel. Because it is, context becomes important. Even though we don't want you to infer too much context into texts, uh, we certainly want you to be aware of the context in which your work was constructed when it was written. Because it is going to influence the writer one way or the other. They either are affected by their context or they completely reject their context and try to do something different. So if we look at the concept of, uh, or look at the word first of all, um, the, the, the word novel uh, in Italian or Latin means new, uh, so it's a new story, a new invention uh, originally that, that we're looking at in a novel, uh, a writer trying to do something in a different way. The first modern novel, a lot of people would argue, is uh, the 1705 uh, sorry, 1605 novel, uh, Don Quixote by Miguel de Cervantes, uh, written in Spanish. Um, but that uh, was a novel designed to entertain, but also to educate people about the dangers of reading too much uh, romantic, uh, chivalry no romance novels, which was, up to that point, really the only literature available uh, to the common public. Uh, and even that, a lot of people say that they're not really considered novels, they're more just uh, historical uh, or not historical documents, but documentations. Uh, but in the mid-18th century, novels started to become really popular, and that is through the Enlightenment movement, when uh, uh, we started to get academies popping up, uh, starting in France, but then spreading throughout Europe and eventually the world, um, where essentially writers wanted to educate people. And that came from two, fold, two, two, it's two main reasons why that happened. Uh, mainly there's an increase in literacy levels because people are being educated more and also an increase in, in wealth so people could actually afford to buy books for pleasure. So if we look at the, the, the main influence in the Enlightenment movement that certainly came from, from science and logic and reason. We were meant to enlighten people and, and inform them. Novels were realistic, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, helping writers, uh, readers to understand the world they lived in. So these novels were uh, often in the first person, often written from a, a middle-class perspective, uh, and they had one clear unifying theme holding them together. That changed slightly, or the, dramatically in terms of the inspiration, in the Romantic period which followed the Enlightenment, which was a clearly a reaction to the Enlightenment, where artists, um, writers, poets, um, etc., but we're looking at, at novelists, felt that the, the swing towards science and logic and reason had gone too far. So the Romantic movement was the opposite. It was about returning to nature, seeing the inspiration, the awe, the power that could be generated through <coughs> excuse me, uh, an exchange with nature. It was really about emotion over intellect. Uh, it was all about being filled with emotion inspired by nature. When we then move into the um, 1900, I can see I've got a typo up here, it should say 1837 to 1901, Victoria was queen from 1837, not 1937, so you can fix that in your notes if you're taking notes. Um, in the Victorian era, we're moving back, not fully to the Enlightenment, but certainly towards realism again, 
um, <clears throat> writing about the familiar, uh, and often about reality um, being slightly put aside in that mankind was seen to be better and purer than they actually were. Victorians tended to to kind of uh, cover over uh, any any flaws in mankind. If there was, there was usually one flawed character in the novel, and they were often reformed by the end of the text. Uh, or at least they had some kind of epiphany, and they might have died uh, in a in a purer state because they realized, oh, they they saw the error of their ways. So the Victorian era um, had a very particular uh, type of text in that sense, um, with writers like like Dickens. Uh, and Dostoevsky and those sort of uh, people. Then we move into uh, the modernist period, which is uh, really the the time between, well, from the start of World War One until the end of World War Two, the dropping of the bombs on Hiroshima. Uh, and that uh, it's a very um, influential period in terms. Of, there's a lot of things happening. We've got World War One. We've got the Roaring Twenties uh, uh, in America, particularly and then followed by the Great Depression, and then World War II, and it ended with the dropping of the bombs. Uh, and that really became a period of questing, questioning reality, questioning what mankind was about. Uh, and strongly that period was shaped by a lot of philosophy. So we're really moving, uh, questioning both of these standpoints, uh, and ended up in some sort of middle ground, um, where developments in terms of Philosophies like atheism, communism, psychoanalysis, lots of scientific theories from Einstein, etc., um, all led to questioning the values of life and what what is actually important, and often rejecting uh, traditions, um, ideas like like royalty and religion and those kind of things. The writing from this period is often stream of consciousness like, and it's exploring the points of view. Uh, etc., uh, and playing with those. Following the dropping of the bomb on Hiroshima, the world was a bit of, in a bit of a, a shock, really. Um, the the believed good guy, America, had suddenly committed an atrocity by killing millions uh, of civilian Japanese. Uh, so this really led to to a complete loss of belief. I mean, this is obviously coming from um, post World War Two. Uh, depression generally, but uh, certainly the dropping on the bombs was the, um, the sort of the pinnacle of this uh, this emotion. So there's a loss of belief in, in what people had held to be true in terms of who was good and who was bad. Uh, we have a reversal of those traditions, where often the bad guy becomes the good guy uh, in stories. Uh, there's a lot of fragmentation of narratives, pluralism, we have sev- several beliefs uh, at the same time. Uh, a lot of texts from this period are, are ironic or satirical, and there's a lot of metafiction where we're playing with the idea of fiction itself. We mix styles, the language is playful, we're experimenting with the form itself, uh, and the chronology is often broken uh, in, in the stories. The heroes often become anti-heroic uh, and are anti-heroes. Um, post-colonialism becomes a part of this uh, narrative tradition as well, and we're generally challenging authority in line with what the modernists did, uh, and challenging the very concept of reason and science as such, uh, that in fact we can't believe in anything scientific, and we really can't believe in what's natural and, and normal either. So we're really shifting between those two viewpoints uh, in a very confused, roundabout kind of state. So with that brief uh, overview of the history and the development of novels, uh, I'd like to modify the dictionary definition uh, in my way. Uh, And I would say that a a novel really is an author's attempt to depict and interpret the human character and condition while seeking to entertain and enlighten the reader. And I think there's there's really four ways uh, in which a novel is distinctly different from other types of fiction or other types of writing. And I think that's what we need to focus on when we try to define what really constitutes a novel. The four characteristics that I think uh, make a novel are the fact that they have length. Um, Novels are much longer than other texts uh, or other prosaic or uh, other types of writing. Uh, There's a plot that drives uh, the text uh, they're usually about developing one character or several characters towards along with the plot, 
uh, and they tend to develop one or multiple strong themes uh, in the text, in which because the writer is trying to say something about his or her world and convey that thematically to the reader. So uh, I'm going to go through those four features, uh, or those four characteristics, sorry, uh, and try to isolate the what I think are the distinguishing features that create that particular type of characteristic. So if you start looking at the idea of length, um, because a novel is long, we have more room to expand on ideas and develop the nuance uh, in nuance of, of the text as a whole. This leads to much greater cohesion than you might get in a short story. You can have much more fun with syntax and explore uh, syntactically how the text is written. Uh, the structure becomes more important. You can have more than one plot, which obviously in a, in a novella or a short story, you, you only really have one plot, so you, that leads to, to subplots uh, in the text. Uh, and there's, there's room to develop motifs and explore the style much more, particularly in postmodern texts. Secondly, the idea of what distinguishes uh, a novel in terms of plot development, uh, there's the fact that we we have tension, as we said before, we're really using tension to drive the story. Um, the, the narrative arc might become much more pronounced than it would be uh, in, say, a, a, maybe it might be developed in theatre as well, but maybe not in other types of, of writing. Um, you can develop settings much more uh, in greater description. Uh, and in terms of, of how the story is told, you can use flashbacks uh, and cliffhangers and suspense to really drive that chronology uh, and, and jump back and forth in the story. Uh, and also the, the choice of a genre, because you, you in the, the genre of a novel, you choose a subset of what type of novel you're writing, and that in itself is saying something to the reader. So, so you can think about what's being communicated to me as a reader by the fact that this is a crime novel, or this is an allegory, or this is a Bildungsroman. Uh, if we look at the features uh, along character, um, we then have uh, the, the characters in the text become the vehicle for the writer to explore uh, mankind. So they kind of become a microcosm for uh, mankind. So we have obviously the ideas of, of protagonist and antagonist. Uh, some of these becoming more, as we said, uh, anti-heroic in postmodern texts. Uh, but also look at the stock characters or the minor characters around these protagonists and antagonists. And what, what are they used for? How are they? Are they caricatures? Uh, are they used symbolically? Um, is there, uh, are some of them being developed through their dialogue? And, and can we even rely on, on what the narrator is saying about these characters? Is the protagonist the first person... Uh, telling the story? If so, can we trust what that person is saying? And the last of our four characteristics is a theme. Uh, and this is really where um, the abstract moral message that the writer is trying to convey. Um, when you write about a theme, try to write, um, try to really develop what is the theme of the text into a phrase or a thought rather than just a single word. So if you're saying, oh, the theme of this text is love, that's really quite flat and it doesn't really say much at all because love can be uh, so many things. So it's much better to then develop that into a phrase, such as, for instance, too much passion can result in an individual's destruction. That way you're actually saying something very clearly about love. We can say that love has the power to conquer all or whatever the, the aspect of love is that you think the text is exploring. So you're really delving into uh, the thematic exploration further. Uh, the other things that are used to develop this theme uh, is obviously the tune of the tone of the writing, the mood of the text, uh, any motifs that might feature, symbols that might recur. Again, the narrative perspective might used, be used to develop the, the themes of the text. Uh, and often the protagonist, whether he's a hero or an anti-hero, he or she, um, uh, will be part of, of exploring that main theme of the text. So if we put all of these together, um, the length, the plot, the character, and the themes explored, that is really what distinguishes a novel from other types of writing. Uh, so when you're looking at the, the genre of novels, uh, they're the kind of the features that build that, novel, that text type up. So just a few final remarks before I leave you today. 
Um, if you're using this video to prepare for IB paper 2, uh, you might have already seen my video on uh, how to prepare for the poetry questions. This obviously uh, supplements that video. <coughs> Excuse me. So make sure that you prepare one essay plan on each of the four characteristics. So you have an essay plan if the question is about plot, one essay plan if the question is about length. Uh, so you have your four essay plans set up. And then you go back and look over past questions and see, okay, so if I got these questions, could I at least answer two of the three questions on each paper? Then I think you're well prepared. If not, then you might have to change your plans a bit or change your definitions so that you come in line with, with past questions. But certainly I think in these, if you have these four categories prepared, you will be able to explore the novel questions very well. Those of you uh, who have questions, and that certainly do not have to be, the questions don't have to be about uh, IB at all, I'm happy to help you uh, with other aspects of uh, novel exploration, or if there's some other aspect of the English course that you feel I should explore in future videos, please uh, make a comment below or send me a message and I shall uh, try to help you out in the future. Best of luck, and we'll see you next time.